busy day with bills. Uh, today we're going to be voting on four bills giving city agencies greater ability to enforce penalties for violations uh, returnable to the Environmental Control Board. These bills address issues that have made it difficult for city agencies and the Department of Finance to collect outstanding debt stemming from ECB violations. To address that, this legislation holds violators accountable for unresolved debt and puts in place policies that will help agencies and the Department of Finance identify those who owe debts from these uh, debts from the ECB. An additional bill in this package will authorize a 90-day amnesty program to resolve current outstanding judgments issued by the ECB. Those who are subjected to the Environmental Control Board judgments will be able to resolve those judgments by paying 75% of the imposed penalty and having the accrued interest waived. Oh, I'm sorry, waived. The I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> The legislation will also require the Department of Finance to conduct an outreach campaign to publicize the amnesty program in order to maximize participation. Uh, these are bills that are put forward by Councilmember Palos and Councilmember Julie Santagenas Copeland, and I will ask them to say the words. Every day, council members receive calls, emails, Tweets with photos of quality of life problems like trash on sidewalks, noise before or after hours, dangerous construction, often because of a bad neighbor. Until now, a 3 one complaint might result in a violation, but those violations were rarely collected to the tune of $1.6 billion. We've been working on this quality of life issue since May of 2014 when council member Ferris Copeland and I raised the issue at a joint budget hearing of our committees. Following the hearing, the Department of Finance issued a report in June of 2014, which provided the basis for this legislation and Local Law 11 of 2015, sponsored by Councilmember Ferris Copeland and I, requiring reporting on these quality of life violations. The first report issued in November of 2015 supported the need for further reforms. Two main problems became apparent. First, Violations were missing information necessary to find out who was responsible. And second, bad neighbors with outstanding violations could still do business without correcting mistakes or changing their behaviors. The first two bills will help us identify who is responsible. Introduction 807A is sponsored by Councilmember Barreras Copeland and I and requires the city to make reasonable efforts to find the person responsible instead of generically writing violations to <coughs> owner of. Introduction 812A that I sponsored with Councilmember Ferris Copeland requires agencies to include unique identifiers like the borrowed block and lot number, BBL, and building identification number, the VIN number, on notices of violation. The final bill, Introduction 810A, requires agencies to consider all outstanding or repeated quality of life violations when renewing or granting permits, licenses, or registrations with public reporting on applications reviewed and denied. Moving forward, when New Yorkers complain about a violation and it is issued, instead of ignoring it or paying it as a cost of doing business, bad neighbors will have to improve their behavior. Passing these bills will not only help the city collect $1.6 billion, but will importantly change the behaviors that jeopardize public safety and will improve quality of life. I'd like to thank the speaker and council member Ferris Copeland for working with me and my team and the staff on this for almost two years now. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'd like to thank Speaker Marquiverito for her um, dedication and also for supporting us through this process and uh, also the legislative team and the finance division for helping us put this together. The city currently is owed one point $5.8 billion in the Environmental Control Board fines and penalties. These fines are from the Department of Sanitation, the Department of Building, and other agencies for things like sidewalk repair, posters on bus stops, and lack of garbage pickup. Last year, in an effort to bring more transparency in the ECB debt collection process, the Council passed a, a local law requiring an annual report that was, as was mentioned by Council Member Cables, who I'd like to personally thank. Um, I don't want to repeat what has already been said. We're just trying to make sure, now that when we pass this legislation today, that we engage with the press because you're also going to give us an opportunity to spread the word. 
This is an amnesty program. It will last 90 days. We can give people opportunities to come out of the shadows, pay their ACP fines, and not have to face tougher penalties if they don't. So you have these 90 days. After these 90 days, there will not be another program like this one that has such leniency and such a forgiveness per, uh, uh, aspect. Um, so please help us spread the word and ensure that we get New Yorkers to pay their debt. Thank you. Thank you.